So you've always wanted a farm of magical cartoon animals doing your bidding. The ability to give green monkeys AKs and to punch Pokemon into submission? Well, Palworld might just be the game for you. I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd enjoy Palworld going in. It seemed like a blatant ripoff of Pokemon with some standard crafting elements slapped in to make the game seem like a little bit more than the Hollow Forgeria was. Throw in some trailer footage of green monkeys with guns, an industrial sweatshop of pokey- nope, pals, and it would sit next to those Steam games we all see. You know, the anime girl FPS ones. What I discovered was that not only were my assumptions of its content right, but even more surprisingly, it worked. And it was fun. Like, really fun. So if you've not yet had the chance to play Pal World, whether you're sitting on the fence on whether to buy, or you still after all these years haven't managed to drag yourself away from Red Dead Redemption 2, I'll break down some of the core features of this early access title to hopefully make the decision a little bit easier. Pal World has just hit early access and is available on Steam and Xbox, and if you don't want to shill out the 30 USD price tag, it's also on Game Pass, so maybe just try that. If I started anywhere other than the core feature of the Poke- nope, pals, then I'd be doing you and myself a disservice. They are the main selling point of Pal World, the source of some of the funniest memes and shorts I've seen in weeks, and surprisingly, something I didn't know I needed in a survival crafting game. There is no kindly old professor, and no great journey to become the very best, at least not yet in the early access nature of this title, but there are weaponized Care Bears, and answers. Answers to questions like, could I take a Pokemon in a one-on-one -on -one fight? Why don't trainers just use their Pokemon to beat up other people for their money? Why hasn't anyone given a Pokemon a gun? Or put a Pokemon in a rocket launcher? But I'm getting carried away here. Capturing your pals, haha, <laughs> I got it that time, is much like our beloved Japanese title in the fact that you need to weaken the adorable creatures through violence to the point of near death and use an eldritch magic disguised as science to forcibly contain them. That creature is now, and forever will be, your willing and useful servant. You can have five pals in your party with one out and about, with some caveats, exceptions, and likely as the weeks unfold, several exploits of the early access title's mechanics. The pals have traits, making them better or worse than the next pal next to them, encouraging the continuous capture of them, even if you have that particular creature already, and these traits aren't just combat related. Capturing 10 of the same type of pal gives you an experience boost, allowing you to power level, something you'll want to do, more on that later. As you've likely gathered from the trailers and numerous shorts, the pals can be set to work at your base, harvesting resources, manufacturing items, and even willingly sacrificing themselves so that you and your other pals might sustain yourselves on the nutrient-rich benefit of their flesh. Much like Pokemon, the pals have elemental types that will aid you in your battles against other pals, with the well-worn and reliable rock-paper-scissors matchup of water beats fire, fire beats plant, and so on and so forth. There are pals you can ride, whether that be across the cartoonish fields or through the skies, and these pals' as mounts are cleverly level-locked behind your crafting mechanic, more on that shortly, as well as armed with weaponry as previously mentioned. Some of your pals will have abilities that will aid you in resource collection, have a bump to their damage or even a debuff, and some of them will have traits that'll scream I have no real benefit to you besides one, and when you unlock the cleaver and the crafting tree you can exercise that one use. As it stands, each pal appears independent of itself in so that there are no evolutionary lines, clearly the work of one god, though you can find and incubate eggs that just might result in you getting a particularly useful pal somewhat earlier than you might have normally. There are a few more things about pals I haven't mentioned here, but it's time to move on to other facets of the game, and those points will likely pop up as we go. As I mentioned before, the survival crafter element of this title initially seemed like a throw-in to give this game some semblance of individual legitimacy, as opposed to being a blatant copy-paste of Pokemon. Much to my surprise and delight, these mechanics have been beautifully integrated. There's the age-old eat food or you lose health and die, though not to the tedious level where you have to manage macros. Berries are plentiful in the starting areas, and the agricultural foodstuffs will pop up as you progress through the map's newer areas as well as level up. All that aside, most pals are made of meat, and that meat can be cooked and consumed. Oh, didn't I mention that? That's right, you heard me. Should times get tough and you and your party of pals need food, you can always go Flight 571 and kill and eat your friends. Thanks, Gary. From the get-go, you'll be prompted by the in-game tutorial to set up a base through the placing of a pal box that will define the space with which you can build in. 
be careful when placing this the first time, as I, like many others, put this down too close to the starting area right next to a cliff and effectively reduced my usable building space by a fair whack. You'll soon discover that the longer you play, the more you'll begin to rely on that space and the resources contained within. The PAL box also acts as your management interface for the PALs you have, a way by which to measure the level of your settled area, as well as your anchor point for teleportation to unlock teleport points. Like any good survival crafter, wood, fibre and stone are the backbone of your starting lineup when it comes to building, and you'll quickly be up and running with the standard tools like axe and pick. Having some basic pals on hand from the get-go will make this breeze by, as this at first comical game feature turns out to be something I've been wanting in a crafter for the longest time. No longer will you have to stand at a workbench and craft 150 arrows, when you have an adorable and 100% willing sheep creature to do it for you. You'll be prompted by the in-game tutorials to build beds and food bowls for your willing workforce to keep them placid and productive, and as I mentioned before, some of these pals will have traits that make them better or worse than their peers, so be sure that you aren't putting too much responsibility on the laziest pokey- nope, pal in the room. Damn, I was doing so well. As you gain experience from battles and building, you'll gain points to bump your core attributes. I'm personally a fan of the carry weight as it allows for more resource collection before becoming encumbered, as well as technology points to expand your crafting library. There are the standard pillars such as specialized workbenches for tools like weapons and your constantly needed PAL spheres, and resource refining stations like the campfire and furnace. You can also create mini plots that will provide a steady though small trickle of resources, so long as you have the appropriately skilled PAL to maintain it. Power leveling is the key to success as these technologies will unlock schematics like better weapons and armor, which you'll need, believe me, more on that soon, and items to increase your party PAL's usefulness such as harnesses to ride specific PALs. It's once you get the flying PAL's harness that the game really starts to open up, allowing you to cross greater distances and seek out specific locations. Speaking of locations, Power World has a varying range of biomes that range from icy cold to boiling hot, and both you and your pals can be affected by this. Crafting environmentally resistant armor, as well as temperature controlling items will allow for the comfortable expansion of your territories. The combat is an integral part of Power World, though depending on your playstyle, you can tailor it to suit you. More armor and better damage will allow you to turn the tide in your favor, as it's not just your pals doing the fighting. Enemies will often target you, so having the right gear can mean the difference between victory and having to continually respawn and go back to your death location to collect your drop gear. You'll have melee and ranged weapons at your disposal, each increasing in potential as you level up and unlock the appropriate schematics, so be sure to keep on top of that. Much like Pokemon, pals have the commonly known strengths and weaknesses to certain types of damage, not only available to your pals, but also to you in the forms of resistant armor and elementally imbued weapons. While not as wildly expansive as something like Monster Hunter, the offering of fire arrows to help you against, say, a stronger plant type might just be what you need to take out overpowered foes. Much like Pokemon, you'll need to exercise caution when using type damage to your advantage, as while it's useful to take chunks of HP off of a particularly strong enemy, should your intent be to capture, and it almost always should be, the difference between low health and death is a very fine line. At times like that, it's prudent to summon your active pal back and do the damage yourself in a more controlled manner, as it currently seems pals have one setting, and it's 11. There are several specific pal locations about the map, providing a challenging goal with the rewards being a cool mega version of that pal, as well as items necessary to particularly useful recipes. Most of this just scratches the surface of PAL World and the game itself is only just released to early access. I'd go further into detail, but if I'm being completely honest, I've only sunk 14 hours into the game and making this video has taken me away from that long enough as it is. So as I go back to continue journeying through this wild world, do me a favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. Be sure to check out this video here, YouTube thinks you'll like it. Leave a comment if it's wrong or, or right or, or just tell me your favorite PAL or Pokemon or whatever. Peace.